Peter Charles here, Folk to Fly, Fly Fishing, and today let's talk about running line, specifically coated versus mono, because they both have their advantages and they both have their disadvantages. And people can have their preferences and that's fine, but I think we should be aware of the impact it has on our casting and uh, what are some of the issues between the two of them and why we would choose one over the other. So I've got uh, some footage of me here casting and uh, I'm using, as I say, my NRX 11-foot uh, 8-weight switch rod, Airflow Rage, that sonar tip, and I'm using this uh, Impact 30-pound running line uh, made by Airflow. Uh, usually you can find running lines that run from 30-pound to 50-pound, uh, and uh, the advantage is of one over the other is really that the, um, the lighter one will shoot better, and tend to be a little bit more relaxed and less curly, coily. Uh, the thicker one, of course, is better if you're dealing with uh, bigger species, snaggy conditions, you're much less likely to break that running line than the 30 pound. So it's a trade-off. And normally, uh, we would use uh, the heavier mono in uh, with heavier heads, for example. And the same thing is true of coated running line. Uh, you can get 20 pound core versus 30 pound core. And again, it's the same thing, lighter heads versus heavier heads. The heavier heads have an easier time pulling out the, uh, the heavier running line. So the, the, the thing about mono, uh, as I've got here on the screen, is the, the, the light mono offers very little drag to the cast and very little weight. So when the head is flying out, it's not losing much energy uh, to the mono as it pulls it out. Uh, so we can get a good cast. But it comes with a problem. Mono is very slippery. And I've got a lot of arthritis in my hand, so I have trouble holding on to it, especially when it gets cold. So I've got some tape on my these two fingers to try and help me get a grip on it. It's sort of worked a little bit, but it's not great. But it's one of the problems of mono is that it's slippery. And uh, in cold weather, or if you've got problems with your fingers like I have, it's an issue. But we're going to see here how much I can actually cast. And I've got a bit of a headwind that day. Uh, uh, probably uh, maybe a you know, 15, 20 kilometer an hour headwind, you know, 10, 12 mile an hour. And uh, so I'm not going to get max distance out of it, but you're going to see what I do. Now I'm going to stop it right there. Let's look at these two loops. These loops are as long as the rod. So they're about roughly 22 foot each. Uh, so there's 44, 45 foot of running line off, off the reel right now in those two loops. Uh, you can see that just the tips of the loops are touching the water. And that's because the mono is so light. Uh, it, it, the, you know, gravity doesn't pull it down as much. So the current is just pulling it almost dead straight. And there's just the tips. And this is very good for when we're casting because we're not going to expend much energy pulling that mono out of the water. Now keep in mind, mono has a slightly higher specific density than water. So if you just let it sit in uh, calm conditions, it will sink. Uh, but it will come out of the water relatively easy because it's skinny. So you can see the large loops I've got here. And I've only got two loops. And, uh, and, and it prevents tangles. So you've got fewer loops. You can get away with fewer loops because the mono is so light. Uh, and uh, because you're doing fewer loops, it's less prone to tangles. On the flip side, if you get a tight kink in, in the mono, you've significantly weakened it at that point. So, uh, you know, on the one hand, you get less tangles. But when you do get a tangle, it's potentially more damaging than with coated running line. So you can see the cast I'm going to get off. So I'll just do the numbers. Right now, as I'm standing there, it's about 60 feet from me to the fly because the head is 40 feet. I've got, I don't know, eight foot of mono on the end of it. And um, I've got, uh, you know, the running line through the rod and out of the guides and overhang. So roughly 60, 61 feet. And I've got 40 to 45 foot of mono loops there and I'm casting into a headwind. So we'll see how that goes. And we get almost every bit of it out, and there's just a little tiny bit left. So that's about a 100-foot cast into a headwind. And that's typical of what you can do with mono, because it offers so little resistance, you're able to cast further, even into a headwind. So 
uh, mono has that main advantage, it's distance. And, uh, and it's simply because it offers less drag and less weight. Okay, here we've got coded running line, and there's our problem with coded running line. Uh, it tangles easily, especially when it gets twists into it. And we can get twists in our, in our casting. If we're not casting very well, it's very easy to get twists in the running line. So here I've got, I had a great cast, and I've got a, an ugly tangle that went right up into the guides. Now I'm going to have to pick that out and untangle it. The good thing is it's not likely to damage the line, even if it's snug. So um, when you're going to have to uh, cast with the coded running line, be aware of the fact that you can, if you're not casting well, especially if you're doing a lot of side, sort of this rolling sidearm motion, you'll see sort of people sort of rolling in a sidearm cast. That'll can tend to put twists in your running line. The way to get the twists out is take the head off and let the running line dangle in the current. Uh, and as it dangles in the current, it'll relax and start to take some of the twists out. And then when you wind it back in, you hold it tight and the twists will come out of it. Uh, so once in a while, you're just gonna have to do that with the coated running line. You just you know, get the twist out of it. Just stand in current, let it dangle in the current, wind it back in, the twist will be gone. But once you start getting tangles and twists, I should say, you'll start getting tangles. It's inevitable. So it's, you know, it's, it's the life with a coated running line. And in order to reduce water drag, I have to carry more loops. So if I carried a large loop with mono because of its weight, a lot of it will be sitting in the water. So when it comes off the water, there's more drag. So the way we try to get around that is to carry more, more loops and have the loops a bit smaller. So there's less of the, the running line in the water. And uh, so that's what I'm doing here. I, I'm carrying about uh, half a dozen loops, but you'll get this interference, uh, even though this doesn't tangle in this particular cast, you still get this interference, uh, which creates drag when you're using lots of loops. So this is another reason why coated running lines don't go as far. So in a typical wading situation, I'm talking about ankle deep like I am here, 50 to 55 feet is about the maximum I can carry off a coated running line off the rail. And usually I'm working more around about 45. If I don't really need that super extra distance, uh, I'll go with 45 just to minimize the chance of tangles. Uh, where if I can hang on to the mono, I can run 60 to 70 feet of mono off the rail without any problems and not worry about the tangles either. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any footage of it, but I was out fishing uh, a few days earlier and I wasn't dealing with the headwind and I had upwards of 70 feet of uh, mono running line off the reel without any difficulty. So you can manage more running line when you're dealing with mono, uh, as, long, as I say, as long as you can hang on to the thing. So here's a decent cast, goes out no trouble. And we'll just put another couple of casts in there. And this is one of the things I do with, uh, with coated. I'm doing poles that are roughly close to three feet, around about three feet. And I've one, two, three, four, five, six. That gives me one big loop and then, one, then five poles, then four poles, then three poles. So I've got staggered loops. Uh, they're not all the same size. If they're all the same size, they'll interfere with each other even more. So you're reducing your odds of tangles if you use a staggered approach. <clears throat> and you see this one goes out cleanly without any problem and there's no real interference. That one worked out quite nicely. So uh, there's another issue is, what's it like when you're fighting a fish? Unfortunately, I happened to lose this one so I didn't get a picture of it. But uh, mono, what's it like when you're fighting a fish and when it's, you've got a big fish and it's head shaking? Well, mono is very stretchy. So uh, you'll feel that give with a fish. Where uh, with my coated running lines, this is um, airflow ridge line, uh, you're going to have um, uh, a lot less stretch. So you're in more contact with the fish. So bottom line, I'm not gonna try and say which is right, and which is best. I'm gonna leave that up to you. Uh, personally, I prefer the less stretch. The, the stretchy mono gives me um, less confidence. Uh, I like the contact from the, uh, the low stretch cores, but other people may have a different approach to that. 
So there are issues about fighting fish with, with the different uh, types of running line. One of the benefits from um, mono is it takes up less room on the spool, which is an advantage when you're fighting a fish is when you're reeling in, if you're not careful with your level winding, it's not taking up a lot of room. So you can see in this picture, and I'll show you right here, this orange here is um, coated running line. And you see how much room it's taking up on the reel. So the yellow, uh, that sort of chartreuse yellow is my Dacron backing and my running line and my head. And you can see how much room it's taking up on the reel. Um, and this is mono. And so the orange is my Dacron backing. And then I've got a little strip of yellow mono running line. And then there's my head. So you can see in this picture, the comparison is the mono takes so much less room. So one of the compelling reasons for using mono is if you have a spool that doesn't have a lot of capacity and you need enough running line because you're fishing for a species that runs like Atlantic salmon, uh, then having a, a mono allows you lots of room for backing. And I'll just zoom in here. We'll just see the difference. You can see it now, nice and clearly now, the difference between coated and mono. Uh, and just the coated takes up just that much more room. So ultimately, the choice I find for mono versus coated, it boils down to handling. And usually it's temperature and grip. The old uh, mono running lines were terrible for coiling when it was cold. Modern ones seem to be a lot more relaxed. So there's less of a problem in cold weather, but then we get into grip problems. So again, I'm going to leave that up to you as far as temperature and grip is concerned. <laughs> Not everybody has rheumatoid arthritis in their hands and they can hang on to mono a lot better than I can. But um, generally, you know, it's a handling versus gr uh, grip uh, versus temperature. And also you have to be concerned with tangles and, and capacity as well. So you start filtering all that in together to decide which is the best for you. And uh, normally I don't use mono at all. So I've got this one loaded with mono just for doing these videos. Otherwise uh, I won't bother. And as soon as the videos are over, I'll probably take that off. Anyway, so give that some thought when you're choosing running line uh, and um, go with which works best for you, especially if you need distance or capacity in your spool. Mono is great, but if uh, you're worried about handling, then coated is definitely better. Cheers. Mm -hmm.